All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the process for syncing a Canvas course gradebook to Infinite Canvas. <clears throat> it is my preference and my recommendation to begin this integration or this process on the Canvas side first. And so we're going to walk you through uh, the steps that it takes to figure it out on Canvas, and then we'll go over to Infinite Canvas. So I am in a uh, Canvas course as we speak. And the very first thing I want to do is I want to go over to the assignments page and look at my assignment categories. Now on both platforms, Infinite Campus and Canvas, you can create your own categories, uh, assuming that your school district has uh, given you that permission by default, you can create your, cat your own categories. And so assignment categories uh, are generally used in order to communicate what type of assignment it is or it is used in order to weight the grade based off of those categories. So classwork worth 50%, test worth the other 50%. That's the reason. If you're doing an average of all assignments uh, in both platforms, then really you just need one category and you can just call it classwork. Um, I will not focus uh, this tutorial on the final exam for a variety of reasons, but one of them being that the two platforms treat the final exam differently. Uh, Canvas treats the final exam as, just, as if it's another assignment category and it's not separate from the term grade, whereas an infinite campus, the final exam has nothing to do with the term grade. It is part of a composite semester grade. So I won't be speaking to the final exam. All right, so what I need to do over here uh, is make sure that I do have, if you are doing a weight, that you do go in here and choose groups weight and figure out what percentages each category uh, is worth in the overall weight of that grade. Uh, the example I have here is showing that classwork is 100% of the term grade, not the semester grade, because the final is not factored over here. Uh, so I'm going to set this at 100%. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to tell Canvas that when it is syncing with Infinite Campus, which category to use on both platforms. So I've already done this. You can see a chain link here. This does show that a link has been made uh, from Canvas to Infinite Campus with regards to how this category will be treated. Uh, we'll show you how to do that. We're going to go up here to the three dots and choose Sync SIS Categories. You will only have this option if your school district has fully uh, worked with the, the two platforms and their engineers to get the syncing process set up. All right, so we're gonna choose Sync SIS Categories, and you will see this page here pop up, and it says, okay, we uh, need to sync the categories. Now, I've already done this, so this is showing you what success looks like. If you've already synced them between the two platforms, then it will say synchronize. And so what you would have to do if that's not the case, is you would have to uh, first see your uh, Infinite Campus section here. So this is the name of the course over in Infinite Campus. You will never have to choose that, because Infinite Campus is the platform that is driving which courses even exist in Canvas and which teachers are assigned to teach them. So this is already showing me that this course is already matching an Infinite Campus course with a similar name. Now what I need to do over here is I need to say, okay, in Canvas I'm calling this category classwork. What do I want to call it or what category is its equivalent uh, over on the Infinite Campus platform? I strongly recommend that you use identical names to reduce any kind of confusion or translation between the platforms. So because it, I call it classwork in Infinite Campus, I made sure to call it classwork in Canvas. Uh, so by choosing that, it will then say it's synchronized after a second or two, meaning anytime I send over an assignment from this class, Canvas is going to tell Infinite Campus to use the classwork category over on that platform. Uh, this will also help reduce the chance of getting an uncategorized assignment button appearing over an Infinite Campus during a sync. So you're t saying from now on, anytime an assignment in Canvas is given the classwork category, uh, Infinite Campus will treat it as a classwork assignment over there. Okay, if you have not chosen these before, you will have to press this blue Sync Categories button down here to make this semi-permanent. All right, I will close that out. So that is ultra important in helping to reduce from having to do any manual work over on the, Inf uh, the Infinite Campus platform. All right. The other thing you need to do is that when you are making assignments, I'm going to go down to one that's live here. 
we need to make sure that the assignment meets the requirements. So let me go pull up an assignment and go to its edit view so you can see what all is required. Every assignment has to have a name. It does not have to have a description, description at all. That's just being communicated to the student. So it has to have a name. You have to give it a point total. Then you have to say what category it is, especially if you're doing weighted categories. You need to make sure you choose the category that's appropriate. Uh, then you want to scroll on down and make sure that it says include this assignment's grades when syncing to your uh, school's student information system. Our student information system is called Infinite Campus. That's a required check. You have to choose everyone. Now that's where this can uh, get confusing to some. You can't choose to assign this assignment to just a few students or a select group of students because the way the data sync works is it expects to see an entire roster of students coming over and if it doesn't match, it won't sync. That doesn't mean that you can't exempt students. It just means that you may need to communicate to students in the room that they are exempt from doing this one or go into the Canvas gradebook for this assignment and give them the exempt status so that they don't have to do it. But you do have to at least assign it to every student in order for the sync to be successful. Give it a due date and then press save. If you choose, um, if you forget to put in a due date, let me take my due date out here and I try to press save with include infinite campus, I'm going to get an error message that says, please set a due date or change your selection for the sync uh, to SIS option, meaning it's not going to let you check sync to SIS unless you have a due date. That is one of the required fields. When you are finished with that, you will press save. Okay, I'm gonna cancel out of this because I uh, don't wanna have to redo that. All right, so now I've got an assignment uh, set. You would want to do that to all of your assignments. Another place to go and check to see if you have the syncing option turned on per assignment is on the assignments page. So once this loads here, you'll see that I have all of my assignments here that are published. This uh, check mark indicates it's published, which means students can see it. Um, you can see here I have a title, uh, I have a module name here, I have a due date, and I have points. So the only thing that's left to be required is to turn on this option here. And because we did it on the settings page, this is already set. Uh, if you go through and you notice some of these in here do not have a check next to them, that would either mean you didn't check the box or that assignment is not eligible for syncing because it doesn't meet one of the requirements. So you notice over here on the left, I don't have a due date yet for this assignment or any of these future assignments. Therefore, it doesn't meet the requirements and I can't sync it. So if I were to choose this option, I will get an error message that says unable to sync with Infinite Campus. It's missing a due date. So I'm really pleased that uh, Instructure has added in uh, that feedback so that students aren't wondering why a, uh, a sync didn't occur for an assignment. So you get that up front now. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add in some scores and then show you how the syncing would take place manually and with a nightly sync. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the gradebook and the assignments that I've assigned for this particular student and class is those uh, that are 6.1. So scroll all the way down here here's my sixth one this student looks like they've got a five out of five on that one and a five out of five on this one and I'm just gonna keep entering in these scores as I see them all right so nothing new there right you're just entering scores as you normally would you could still use the speed grader and open up the entire class uh, this is a class of one student it's an independent study class so I don't have any more students in there okay so all of my grades are in there when you are ready now, we have the option to do a manual sync right now, so an on-demand sync, which you can do 24-7. Um, and then secondly, we'll talk about how to set up a nightly sync so that any changes you made throughout the day automatically get sent over at night. So to do a manual sync, we're going to go up here to where it says sync. And then it should say sync to and whichever product you're using. We're using Infinite Campus, so I'll press that and a box will appear. This box here is going to show you all sections. So if you cross-listed uh, this particular course with multiple sections, you could choose to sync only certain period grades from the cross-listed course. 
In this case, I only have one, so it'll go to all of them. Um, then I can choose which assignments I want to sync. So I'm going to choose all, but you could uncheck certain ones. Uh, this shows the due date for the assignment. And then this right here says last sync. As I continue to sync or do more, multiple manual syncs, this will show me the most recent successful sync. If you do not see an assignment in this list that you expected to see, then that would mean it doesn't meet one of the requirements. It doesn't have a uh, title, it doesn't have points assigned, it doesn't have the sync box checked, it doesn't have a due date, and it's not assigned to all students. So that would be something you would have to go back and correct. All right, to do the manual sync, uh, we'll just press post grades, okay? And this is telling you that it is scheduled to take place. So uh, a lot of school districts are using both platforms. So you're essentially in a queue. I haven't found the queue to be all that long of a wait. So I'm going to show you what this progress page looks like. And you can see here, it tells me grade pass back, which is what the syncing process is called. You're passing grades from one platform over to the other one. It tells me the name of the course. So this is actually the same page you can view for all of your courses collectively. So if you've done a sync in multiple classes, you would see that. It shows me the date and time when it was completed, how many assignments, so four assignments were 100% successfully synced, and they made it over into our Infinite Campus, which is our SIS system. I can see the number of assignments. And then if I click on completed, it gives you kind of a visual graph of that same data. Uh, there is a warnings tab up here. This will let you know if something failed. Uh, so there's a, only a small handful of reasons something can fail. Um, and usually it is because um, something is wrong with your infinite campus settings. Uh, so I won't get dive too much into those. Most of these other tabs here are just kind of um, showing you the data visually in different ways. So you can see here, this is getting very specific per assignment and showing you that it did successfully sync. And then if I go over to the grade sync page, it's kind of showing the data a little bit differently um, per student. Okay, so uh, that is really all it takes to do a manual sync. It's really very easy. Um, in order to set up a nightly sync so that it catches anything else I continue to enter in the gradebook for the rest of the day or the rest of the week, I would go over here to where it says grade sync over on the left. If you don't see grade sync, that would mean that your institution has not fully uh, integrated this grade passback feature in yet. So click on grade sync. And again, it will show you a very similar looking history page. You're going to go to utilities. And on the utilities page, you have two options. This one over here is really meant for troubleshooting. Maybe an assignment stopped syncing for some technical reason, so you could delete it from Infinite Campus and then choose to remaster, which means to essentially uh, make a new connection between a missing assignment or all the assignments. Uh, really meant only for troubleshooting, so I wouldn't would be clicking that button. You want to make sure this option is turned on in the screen. And nightly sync uh, means that it will detect any changes between the two platforms uh, at night and send all of the Canvas changes over to Infinite Campus. So this option should be on. Um, the documentation says it's up to the organization or the institution at what time it takes place. Uh, in the Webster Grove School District, ours takes place at 10 p.m. nightly. So teachers coming back in in the morning should see any changes automatically reflected in the gradebook. That is all you need to do to sync grades manually or automatically in Canvas. The next step then is to go over and look at Infinite Canvas. All right, we are back over in the exact same platform. I'm sorry, the exact same course on Infinite Campus. And you can see here, since this is my first sync, I don't have any assignments over here. This page was already loaded during the sync. And so I wanted to show this in case this scenario happened. If you were logging into this course uh, after the sync and you weren't already in Infinite Campus, these assignments would already be posted. So what I want to show you is if this ever occurs, you just press the refresh button on your browser and we will see assignments automatically pop in. I didn't type a single one of those or create them in Infinite Campus. I didn't put in any of those scores. Um, so how do we make sure that these assignments come in and you don't get the uncategorized button? So many teachers have said, hey, this is a button here that's got an orange square and it tells me some of my assignments are uncategorized. That just means in um, Infinite Campus, we need to set some defaults so that when this happens, you're already giving it answers so that it doesn't ask you for input. 
So to do that, we're going to go to settings and we are going to look for non-campus assignment defaults. So when we click there, we need to do a couple of things, potentially. Uh, one, you need to tell it which term every assignment is going to be in. So depending on your organization, excuse me, we'll write it up, passing period. Um, so you need to say which term every assignment is in. So the exam is actually in its own separate term. So we're just going to say term for every assignment so that cam our infinite campus is never waiting for that answer. Um, if you have weighted categories, multiple categories, then you don't want to assign a default. Let the category you chose in Canvas naturally come over and get selected. Uh, this particular course, I only have one category, so I just went ahead and defined it as the default category. So, weighted category teachers, you're probably not going to want to set a default category. But Canvas communicate that as you've chosen those options on that platform. Um, in this category, or this example, with an average of all assignments with one category, I just went ahead and defined it. And then I just press save. And now this is going to automatically sync every single day. That's all there is to uh, setting up grade passback or data syncing between Canvas and Infinite Campus.